Do you remember, Devin, that incredible demo that we saw just a couple weeks ago where you gave the agents a prompt and they built out entire code bases? And I know we've seen stuff like that before, but what really set Devin apart was the fact that it had this incredible interface that included the terminal, the browser, the code editor, and all the agent dialogue. And it was really impressive, but it had one major flaw. It was completely closed source. And not more than a couple days after that demo went viral, now we have a completely open source version of Devon called Open Devon. And today, I'm gonna show it to you, and that's what you're looking at right now. So I'm gonna show it to you, I'm gonna show you how to use it, and I'm gonna show you how to install it. So this is it, and I already set it all up, so let me show it to you first. So it says, hello, I'm Devin, and I asked it, write a simple calculator app with Python. So it started writing a new task. Here on the right side, you can see the terminal, very akin to the original Devin. We have the planner over here. We have a code editor where you can actually see all of the code, and then we have the browser. Over here, you you can select the different models that you want to run. So right now it supports OpenAI and Claude 3, but you can easily plug in an open source local model as well. And then over here we have the browser and you can choose between Langchain's agent and Code Act agent. And to be honest, I don't actually know the difference between these two. I haven't had a chance to test Code Act agent, so I'm using Langchain's agent. But let's continue. So starting a new task, then we go over to the terminal and we can actually see. So command ls, there it is. It looks where it's at. Then it's reading from the app.py. It seems there is already a file that does this. It's a calculator app and so on and so forth. And you can see all the output here. It even tested it for me which is really nice. And then after all that, which really just took a few back and forth, and it's a very simple app, build a calculator app, all done, what's next on the agenda? I iterated on it. So now make an HTML interface for the calculator. So starting a new task, and then it went back and forth, spun up local host even, tested it, made sure it all worked, and then it was done. So all of this was actually pretty inexpensive tokens wise, um, but it was really impressive. and. You can run the calculator like this, so Python calculator.py, or you can spin up a server, and here's the calculator. This is what it built for me with just that simple prompt. So you put in your number right here, put in another number, I'll say four, calculate. Very, very basic, but the point is it works. Now I'm back at Open Devon, and I am running it on localhost, so this is running locally. I am using GPT-4, although I could easily swap out an open source model, which I'll show you in a bit. Now the important thing to remember is, this project has not been around long. I'm talking days. So there are still some bugs, some features still don't work, but it is very usable, and the rate of progression and new features being added is super impressive. So this is the project Open Devon. It has over eight and a half thousand stars already. And if you look at GitHub trending, it is the number one trending app on GitHub. So this is gonna grow quickly. And if I scroll down a little bit, there's another open source version of Devon project called Devica. Although I have tried every single day to get this working and I can't. So I'm gonna keep trying as soon as I can. I'll make a tutorial video for that. But I am able to get Open Devon working and it works really well. So enough talk, let me show you how to install it. I ran into a bunch of issues. Hopefully I will show you how to solve all of them. And most of the issues actually have nothing to do with Devon. They have to do with Python package management and environment management, which you know is the bane of my existence. So open up Visual Studio Code and that's where we're gonna start. Click on this button to toggle the panel and we're gonna open up our terminal. And what we're gonna do is I like to put stuff on my desktop when I'm first playing around with it. So we're gonna CD to the desktop. Now switch back to the open Devon GitHub repository. You're gonna click this green code button right there. And we're gonna copy the GitHub repo URL. Now we're gonna switch back to our terminal and we're gonna type git clone and then paste in that URL and then hit enter. And that's it, we've cloned it to our desktop. Next, we're gonna CD into open Devon. And next, we're gonna click this little button right here, Explorer. We're gonna open folder, select the desktop, and then we're gonna select Open Devon. And now we have the Open Devon project open in Visual Studio Code. All right, now that we have that going, let's spin up a new conda environment. So we're gonna do conda create dash n, od for Open Devon, Python equals 3.10, and we're gonna hit enter. Now, I already have an environment named that because I've gone through this once to make sure it all works before I show it to you. So you're not gonna see this, but go ahead and install it, just hit enter. All right, once that's done, we're gonna grab this command right here, conda activate od, copy paste it, and it should say od right here. 
It may not in your terminal. If your terminal structure is a little different, but for me, I show it right there. So there we go. We have OD activated. The next thing you're going to need is Docker. And I'm really glad that they use Docker because it makes the entire installation much easier. And you can actually run these code environments in a complete completely dockerized environment. So to check if you have Docker, you're gonna type Docker PS, and I do, and there it is. However, when you run Docker PS, you might get Docker is not recognized. And if that's the case, you need to download Docker. So you're gonna to come to docs.docker.com slash engine slash install, and you're gonna look for the Docker desktop client that matches your operating system. So I'm on a Mac, so I click right there. Once you do that, it'll download, and everything else is really just drag and drop or kind of clicking through an interface. It's very, very easy. You don't need to do anything in console. Once you're done with that, open up VS Code again, and you're going to type Docker PS. And now you should see at least this top row right here, container ID, et cetera, et cetera. So the next thing we're going to do is pull the Docker image. And again, this makes everything really easy. So we're going to type Docker pull ghcr.io slash opendevin slash sandbox colon v0.1 and hit enter. And there we go, it's 150 megabytes, downloads quite quickly, extracts, and we're done. So that worked perfectly. Okay, next we need to export our OpenAI API key. So to start, we're gonna use OpenAI, but I'll show you how to set up a local model towards the end of the video. So if you don't already have an OpenAI account, go ahead and sign up. You need a developer account, platform.openai.com slash API dash keys. You're gonna click create new secret key, and I'm gonna type OD open Devin underscore YT. So I know it's for YouTube and I will revoke this key before publishing this video. Click copy, go back and we're going to export it just like that and then hit enter. Okay. Now we've exported it. And basically what exporting it does is it saves it as an environment variable that we can use with this software. However, the better way to do it is to actually create a .env file and store it there, but I'll leave that for you to do. The next thing we need to do is set our workspace directory. And so what I'm going to set it as is export workspace underscore dir equals squiggly line slash desktop slash open devon. So I'm going to keep the workspace in the open devon folder just to keep it all in one place. So go ahead and hit enter there. All right, now we're going to install the requirements. And this is where I started to run into some problems. So I may not run into it again just because I've solved them already. But if I do, I'll show it to you. And even if I don't, I'll show you the problems. I had and I'll show you how I solved them. So we're going to type which Python. Okay. And this is only because we want to make sure that we're using the correct Python for installing with pip. So we grab the Python version we're using. Then we simply paste that in type dash M pip install dash R requirements.txt then hit enter. So one of the issues that I faced is that this project requires rust and specifically the dependency OR JSON requires rust and I didn't have it installed. And so I had an error here, so I didn't have it this time. So this is gonna be a little bit of behind the scenes, but anytime that I do a tutorial video, I go through it once without the camera recording and I document every step along the way. And I also document any errors or bugs that I run into so that when I go to record, I, it doesn't take me forever. So I did have to install Rust. And to do that, I used this command, curl dash dash proto parentheses equals HTTPS dash dash TLSV 1.2 dash SSF and then so on. And by the way, I'll drop all these commands in a GitHub gist just so you have them and you don't have to try to copy them. And the next thing I had to do was restart the terminal. So keep that in mind. So one other thing I want to point out, another issue that I ran into is the OR JSON issue. And to first fix it, I installed Rust and then I ran into another issue with OR JSON. And to fix that, I did this pip uninstall OR JSON. And then I installed it again using this longer command, which basically installs the binary version that is specific to my Apple Silicon. And that was the problem. And all of these problems might be very specific to my machine and you might run into other problems. I recommend consulting AI and it will help you. Just copy paste whatever issue you're running into and it usually will give you some pretty good suggestions. So that command is pip install dash dash no cache dir dash dash only binary colon all colon or json. And once I did that, it finally worked.
And if you do restart the terminal, you need to export the OpenAI API key again, because as soon as you restart the terminal, all of those temporary environment variables are wiped. That's why using the .emv file is always better. All right, now that that's all done, we're gonna try to spin up the server and hopefully it works. It uses Uvicorn and this is the back end. So we need the back end and the front end working. So let me show you what to do here. Uvicorn open devin dot server dot listen colon app dash dash port 3000. Now let's see if I run into an issue. Last time when I tried to spin up the server, it would just completely freeze. And so I actually had to restart the terminal anyway. So we'll see if we have to do that here. All right, so it is looking like it's hanging again, unfortunately. So what we're gonna do is hit control C to try to quit out of here. Although I think it's completely frozen. So we're gonna have to hit control Z and that'll force quit it. And so let's try it again. And if this doesn't work, I'm gonna try restarting the terminal completely again. All right, maybe I'm being a bit impatient, but I don't think it's working. So I'm gonna hit, oh, I spoke too soon. Look at that. So the second time it did work. Maybe it's doing some downloads in the background. I'm not sure, but it did work on the second go. So we have Uvicorn running at localhost 3000, perfect. Now, what we're gonna do is we need to now install and spin up the front end. So we click the little plus button right here. We wait till we get our new terminal up and running. We're still in the open Devon folder and we still have OD Conda environment running. So just verify those things. Now we're going to CD into the folder called front end. And we're gonna be using Node to install it and NPM. And if you don't have Node, if you don't have NPM, you need to go Google that and, or use Claude or GPT or something and just get those two things installed. It should be pretty straightforward. I believe if you're using a Mac, you can even use Brew. So you could do like Brew install NPM and it should work, I believe. All right, so there it is. So that would work. So now we have NPM installed. All right, so now that we have Node installed, let's do NPM install. And that's gonna install all the front end packages. Now, luckily, I have much fewer issues using NPM in the whole Node ecosystem and package management with Node, much fewer issues than I do with Python. So hopefully you don't run into anything. Okay, now that we have all of the Node packages installed, we are simply gonna spin up the Node server now. So npm run start dash dash space dash dash port space 3001 and then hit enter. And that's it, we should be up and running now. Let's give it a try. So I'm gonna click on this local host right there. Actually, I'm gonna hold down command, then click on the local host. And there we go, open Devon, it worked. Wonderful. So it takes a few seconds to initialize the agent and I'm gonna switch to GPT-4 over here. And there we go. Hello, I'm Open Devin. What would you like me to build? So I'll say a simple website that says, hello world. And now we'll see it working a little bit. Starting new task. We can also click over to the planner. Now I've noticed the planner doesn't really update that often or maybe even at all. Um, maybe that's a little buggy. I've also found the browser doesn't really work all that well, to be honest. The terminal seems to work great and the code editor definitely works. So, I mean, there is the code. There's the hello world HTML file perfectly done. So here we go. It's starting up a server all by itself and it visited localhost 8000. So if I actually go over to the browser, it did switch and go over to localhost 8000. So it kind of works, but there's some little bug and it doesn't work completely. Yeah, and if I go back to the logs from the back end, I can see that there was an error here and it exited. So that's it. So definitely still buggy, but they're making a ton of great progress. Now let me show you how to use basically any model, including a locally run open source model. So if you wanted to use Claude, you just export these things right here. So the LLM API key and then the LLM model, you export this and you do that from terminal. Now, if you did want to use a local model, you do LLM base URL and you change it to localhost 3000. And then you can use LM Studio, you can use Olama, you can use anything you want as long as it exposes an OpenAI compatible API endpoint. And you can even select Llama 2 for your embedding model, which is really cool. So you could technically get this to be completely local if you wanted. 
So they are truly trying to mimic what Devin has done. And Devin is super impressive. It is definitely not the first time we've had coding assistance. It's actually far from it, but it is one of the most, if not the most polished user interfaces that I've seen. So I'm really excited for Open Devin. I've tried this other project, Devica, a bunch, and I haven't gotten it to work, but Open Devin works pretty darn well. So give it a try, create issues on their GitHub repository as you come across them, contribute if you're open to that, and and Open Devon can be something really special that helps developers and even non-developers be really productive at building code. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.